Right, let's go. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Very happy and delighted to be joined by my good friend, all the way from Ireland, Gary Cully. Gary, first and foremost, how are you keeping me? How, how's things? Yeah, good. A little bit bored, but um, still training away and trying to keep active and keep fit, get fitter and stuff. But we're all uh, we're all in a weird situation for a while, aren't we? Like, oh. especially bo- especially boxing because. Nobody seems to know anything like and that's the thing. I think we spoke a little bit before we pushed the court here that how bored we are because it's I know we stay at home, save lives and all this sort of stuff, but mentally it's yeah. tough, isn't it? Especially for a boxer who needs to go out running, who needs to go to training, be in training camp and stuff like that. You you, you sort of know what fights are coming. Do you know what I mean? But now you exactly, have no yeah, idea yeah, what's yeah. going on. We know what, what sort of steps I should be taking and what levels I should be getting to, but like it's all up in the air now. Nobody knows when it's going to be, how we're going to do it, if it's going to be in front of crowds, if it's going to be in studios behind closed doors, which would be a strange one as well. Like, so I think boxing's going to change from it. Um, mm. I, th- I don't think it will ever return to wh- how it once was, but you just have to grow and adapt with it, don't you? And, and just adapt and see how see what happens. How are you training? Well, it is the same. Sorry, sorry, only go so no, I was going to say, how are you training? What are you doing to keep fit? And I know you can go out on the roads and do some road work, but what are you doing in terms of punching the bag and weights and whatnot? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of... I'm still training twice a day, like Monday to Friday. Um, I have keys of the gym I train in the NACE. So we're still, I'm still working out there at 11 o'clock every morning and then 5 o'clock I'm on the road as well. So I've been hitting good times on the track. Um, training up the fitness, do a lot of road work. And then, yeah, it's keeping me boxing as well just to try and keep sharp. But, like, if, if you don't come out of this a better fighter than you went into it, I think you've used your time wrong. Like, do you know what I mean? That's a good um, way. That's, that, that's it, actually a good way of phrasing yeah, that. Yeah, like, that's a good thing. It, like, it, it is annoying, and but you have to kind of sit back and say, right, everybody's in the same boat, so when we all get out of it, there's going to be a lot of people that have just stuck or got worse even because they just took it as a holiday. But the aim is just to be, let's say, like, I was meant to fight last night, so... Obviously, I didn't get to fight against Maxi Hughes, but to be above that level when I come out of this, you know what I mean? So the mm-hmm. fight is not going to waste. I just keep living as if I fought that fight. So I'm above that level now. I've beat Maxi Hughes, say, and I, I want to push on again, you know? So I don't want to be, when the, when it comes out of this, stuck in the same level that, that I was before. As I, said, I was going to ask my next question was, how's your mental state? Because you're coming off a great win back in February. At the Ulster Hall, yeah. the uh, Joe Fitzpatrick, you win the BUI title. So, how are you mentally going from winning that with your first title, stopping Joe Fitzpatrick in great style with the stoppage, and then suddenly, boom, no max use fight, staying at home, bloody blah, blah. So, how's your mental state? Yeah, frustrated, like because as well before that, I had the injury, as you know, like so. Yeah. It's kind of been. I know, like I'm, I'm only 24 still, so I am, I am still young, and it's not, it's not all that bad for me. I can use the time as a positive, but. It feels like it's kind of stop start, you know what I mean? Every time I've kind of got a good win, right? The injury happened, then I came back from the injury, got a win, got the Fitzpatrick fight, and then, and now this has happened. So it's kind of I had to pull out of the the Garrido fight with my hand as well. So it's kind of been a little bit stop start, even though I'm, I have had ten fights in in not that long of a time. But I just want to start getting active now and start. I'm I'm ready to start climbing, you know. Talking about climbing, talking about thinking that you're above. The sort of Mackie Hughes level and stuff like that. you. You spoke about the European, the EBU title. Now Francesco Patera, I believe, is the the holder of that. He beat Lewis Ritson. Are you yeah, ready for right. that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it was one I wanted like towards the end of the year. So, like ultimately, I'd like uh, I'm coming off a first round stoppage, and then I was meant to fight. So, if I had got the Maxi Hughes fight and got some rounds in, it would have been nice then to step onto that next. But I've had one round in the past couple of months, so I'd like to come out of this and get a fight. And I think I'm ready for, I think skill-wise and stuff, I'm ready for Viterra. Um, I'm maturing into the weight more. I'm, I'm just becoming more of a man. I'm more, more uh, suited to professional game, I think. So I think soon, I don't think I'm that far off a, a Viterra shot, like maybe three or four months. Three or four months, do you believe? Yeah, I think, but I, well, I think definitely before the end of the year, I want to be up there. Like I'm, I'm uh, 24, I've, I've been pro three years. I think I've showed that I'm above Irish level. Um, I wouldn't jump. I wouldn't like to jump straight into it because, 
like I've said, I've, I've had one round fight. If I had have been tested and, and went a couple of rounds and against Joe, like a couple of six, eight rounds where, where you start breathing heavy and stuff, but I've, I've just had one round in the past couple of months. So I'd like to get a couple of rounds in and then challenge for a big one, yeah. To be honest, it wasn't even a round, mate, was it? It was a minute. So you found <laughs> ah, Yeah, first couple of hunches. Like. <laughs> so let's say... Uh... Patera obviously coming off that win with Lewis Ritz, and I think he's defended that belt on our three times. So he's, yeah, he's he's he's, he's a, a handy quality, operator. He's a quality operator. Yeah, that's why I want to be in with with the likes of that. You know, to see where I'm at. He's a, uh, I think they're the ones you learn from as well. He's very experienced. He's been in with uh, Ritson. He's been in with Paul Hoyland. He's been in with a good few names. So I think it's a it's a realistic one. Um, the other one I like is if. If the fights had happened at the weekend, Paul Hoyland Jr. was in with, with Flanagan and I was in with Maxi Hughes. Like if we had a bow came through, that would have been a great all Irish clash as well. But that could that could still happen, maybe that's just on hold as well. But hopefully big fights along along those names, you know, that had have held or fought for the EBU belt. Are you gonna uh, revisit the Maxi Hughes fight? Is that a fight that you, you sort of want or you think now I'm sort of like because of this pandemic type of thing and I've lost a little bit of time, I just wanna push on to where I think I would be tail end of this year sort of thing? After it, yeah. Like, I, I, I would really visit it, but Maxi Hughes had pulled out uh, two days before the oh, show was cancelled. So, I don't know if he was injured maybe and then he, he maybe he'll be ready when we're, when we're back to normal or whether it was a different reason which he pulled out for. But it, it is definitely a fight because it was made and stuff and people were talking about it saying it was a good matchup. It's one that you don't want to just let go then and people are saying, oh, what would have happened in that fight? Or, mm. I, I know I was expected to win it, but it was my first real test, I think, since the since the Irish title win, stepping up to kind of British, European fringe level, like, you know. So, um, yeah, it is one I'd revisit. I'd, I'd, and he's a very experienced lad. He's a good record as well. So, I think it's a, it's a good fight. I, I mean, like, just talking about it being above Irish level, but an Irish fighter's coming down to your weight. Now, I don't think... A lot of people are talking about you and Sean McComb. Let's just put it out there. Yeah. A lot of you and Sean McComb fighting. But I spoke to Sean a couple of... I think it was last week. He seems to be... He, 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 he would like to fight with you, but I think you're on the same boat when it comes to, why have it now? Let's build and build and build. Make this a bigger fight. Earn some money. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's do it. Exactly, yeah. Like I, I like the fight. I really like it. It's, uh, we were both spar before, both similar styles. We're both being touted as hot prospects, like you know. So it, it's a fight that makes sense. But I think the both of us are in the same boat as we're clever, and we know that we know what the fight can generate as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a point in us fighting now. Like we could fight now for whatever amount of money, but it can be worth double or triple that in a year, and then leave it another year again. It can be worth. Ten times that, you know. So, what is the point in in both? As long as you, you've got to keep winning, though, both of you. You know, you. you... That's it as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've we've got our own jobs to do, but we've me and Sean are mates. Like, you know, I've said, I've said to him, he said to me, we know what's going on. Keep winning, and uh, keep doing your thing. I think we're on our own separate routes. I think the Irish public and the boxing fans have just let us go on our separate routes and mm -hmm. just enjoy the two of our careers unfold, and then when the time is right, it will happen. It's not one that I'm shying away from or that he's shying away from. Like I, I am aware that it's it's ninety nine percent happening down the line, you know, and he's the same. So whenever the time is right and whenever the money's right, it will happen. You don't think that you're sort of you said that you're similar styles, you're the similar you similar height, similar build, similar styles, like you said, you're not gonna cancel yeah. each other out. You still think this is gonna be a great fight when you two meet? Yeah, I don't know. Like it could be, it could end up being a very technical fight and being a stinker. Like I'm not sure. Everybody seems to be, seems to be raved about it now and hyped about it. But with the two styles, like styles make fight. It's and I don't know how our two styles will gel together. Whether it will be a barnstormer, a crowd pleaser, or it could just be the most technical fight you've ever seen. And fucking one jab landed every round. You know, I don't know. Like <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a, it was a strange. It's a strange one that everybody wants to see it, but obviously, because we're both. I think Sean's ten and zero as well, isn't he? We're both ten and zero. Um, yeah, and we're both we're both good prospects. We we're both massive for the weight, similar style. So obviously, it is one that people want to see. But yeah, like I said, it could just end up being like a stinker. I don't know. But Gary, let me know. say let me say this to you: two Irishmen fighting ain't going to be a stinker, is it? Yeah, it's never going to be really, is it? 
No, 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 not with two Irishmen. I've been, to, I've been to loads of like two Irish clashes, a derby like that. Yeah. I don't think they ever. Stakes, are, just, stakes are high. It will, it will be, a, it will be a fight, and I think it can go down as a massive fight in Irish boxing history as well. You know, not only, not only for this era, but for in in, in boxing history in general. So, I think it's one that we definitely should wait it out and and see how big we can make it. You know, can you? Could it be that big a fight where? Both of you have a world title. I mean, because looking at your division right now, the lightweight division, world level, Devin Haney, mm. Ryan Garcia, Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, Richard Comey. You know, there's there's nothing Luke Campbell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. These names are world-class operators. They're, they're special, special fighters. Mm-hmm. It's, going to be, it's not easy for you and Sean to win a world title coming up in the lightweight division, is it? No, they're not wide open. As like they're not. It's not a, a division. Vision where there's there's belts up for grabs at the minute, mm. um, and I suppose the fighters coming into it, Ryan Garcia is what twenty two maybe, mm-hmm. I think he's twenty two. Devin Haney's twenty one, twenty two. Tiafoe Lopez is quite young as well, so 22, it's a young... 22 as well, yeah. So you're yeah, all the same age. Division, you know? So I'm actually old compared to these guys. I'm twenty four, fuck's sake. Um, but no, like it's it's. I'm twenty five, um, mate. So don't worry about it. I'm older than you. Oh, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, it's it's um probably one of the best divisions in boxing at the minute. Mm. So for to say that the two of us will hold world titles and and have a unification for you, I don't know. Like, I, uh, but the stakes have to be higher than they are now, definitely. But it, it's definitely a possibility because I do believe Sean will win a world title, and I do believe I will win one. Whether we're in the same weight at the time we both win them, whether he moves up, whether I move. I don't know, but I do believe the two of us have what it takes to become world champions. So it is a possibility down the line, yeah. See, the thing is, even if you both do move up, the 140 pound division isn't one of them divisions as well where you're going to escape an easy world champion. Do you know what I mean? It's a tough yeah, no. as well. So in and around your weight, whether it be 135, 140, 147, you're going to have a hard fight to become a world champion, aren't you? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Like, who's who's. Like let's say you move up now, it's Ramirez and Taylor have both of them, don't they? There. Yeah, Ramirez and Josh Taylor. Back up. And then you've got so Pro- you you've got Progre Pro- below that, Maurice Hooker, Jack Catterall. Do you know what I mean? So you've got these big names below that as well. So yeah. there's no easy weight in boxing anymore. Like you know, it's it's so so stacked. The talent pool is so stacked that there's no easy weight. But I do really believe that the two of us are at the top of that pool. So. It can happen and it can be a massive fight down the line, but whether what weight it takes place in, both of us could be at 140 when it happens. Who knows? Like, you know? But I, I, my view on it would be probably Taylor fights Ramirez. Whoever wins it will probably move up to 147. Who wins it then? I've got Asher. You, you said it there. I've got Asher. Who wins Taylor Ramirez? Who do you think wins? I think I can't see anybody beating Josh Taylor at the minute. He's just class, isn't he? Mm. He's just unreal. Um, I, I'm I bi- think I, Gary, I'm biased as fuck. Uh, yeah, 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 well, I can't ask you, can I? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, no, I, did, I think Josh beats Ramirez and moves up, maybe chases a Crawford fight then, or like a, a, a massive fight. The belts will start spreading around 140, and maybe maybe there's where we'll meet. I don't know, but it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, sorry, I need to drop that. It's all right. Um, so what's yeah, it? What's your sort of like ambitions to become a world champion? But do you ever think well into the future becoming a two weight world champion and multiple world champion and stuff like that? Do you ever think like that, or do you just think right now my goal is European title? Then once I get the European title, I want to set myself a new goal. Do you, what, what? How do you focus on? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose as as this has panned out a bit more, it's it's actually changed a little bit, and it was like it was always to win an Irish title, win a European and then step on to the world level and start getting world ranked. But now, like, as this has happened, I'm, I'm working really, really hard and I'm seeing the likes of, I'm studying boxing and I'm seeing the likes of the Haney's who's 21 with it being handed the, the WBC belt. Like, I don't believe I'm far off uh, Devin Haney at the minute. You know what I mean? I know in the rankings and I've, um, I'm probably a little bit down the rankings and I'm probably like he's what twenty odd fights so I've only ten fights so I probably can't I shouldn't be calling for them yet, but skill wise and experience wise and stuff like that, I don't see me being far off beating Devin Haney, you know. 
but obviously I have to work my way up and earn that chance. So I, I'd like to, the plan has always been win, win a world title at 135 and then see where we go. I'm definitely big enough, I'm six foot two, like so I won't end up at lightweight. I'll probably probably finish more one four seven. Definitely, um, I think because you you've got you do even though you are quite slim, being six foot two, you will and you're only twenty four. You are still young, believe it or not. Even though you think you're older than half these guys, but yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to fill out. You will fill out hopefully one day. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully, I'm saying that since I'm fucking sixteen, Andy. But it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Next year I'll have muscles. Yeah, well, uh, you've need muscles. You've got a six pack. That's about it. But that's just due to being skinny. <laughs> You see, when you look at like guys like Devin Haney and stuff like that, when they they haven't yet fought the big names, like you know what I mean? They they fought good yeah. opponents, they haven't. But he becomes a world champion. How does that make you feel? Sort of like when they haven't yet fought, like Teofimo Lopez and Momochenko fought big big names. But when somebody like Devin Haney, he gets a little bit of criticism because he hasn't sort of like fought that big name. Yeah, like, well, like I don't think Devin Haney is like he's a world champion but he hasn't really won the belt yet has he like his he hasn't he hasn't even defended it has he no he hasn't no no so like i think his next fight has he's a lot of pressure on his next fight because he he's been given the belt really hasn't he so whether they take uh whether they take a hard fight for his first defense i don't he's coming off shoulder surgery as well and obviously going through this he hasn't fought for a while like all of us but I can see him coming out and taking a, a quite of a, a little handy handy defense first, so he'll probably get more criticism over that. But to be but fair, yeah, he's, he's he's beat everybody that's been put in front of him. Do you well, mean, that's he, all he, he has to do. Well, you know? hmm. And and to be fair to him, he's calling for the Lomachenkos, and exactly. he's he's not shying away really, is he? So you have to give him credit for that. But as far as being a legit world champion, I don't see him as a legit champion yet. Until he defends the belt a couple of times against good names. I've seen his last fight, the, I forget who's the name of the guy. He was on the Logan Paul undercard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that one earlier? I can't remember. No, because I was out in New York when he fought the Russian guy. I can't remember his name either now. Like but yeah, the opponents haven't been, I wouldn't say like world beaters, have they, you know? But like you said, he's beat everybody who's put in front of him. He's in that position and. Uh, yeah, he's fucking killing it. He's doing well for a 21 year old, 22 year old. Doing better than me. Well, you know. Yeah, he's a little bit ahead of me as well, so I have to give him credit. Definitely. When you look at because him, of his comments, I'm definitely, but, but I wasn't really, I hadn't really got my eye on him, and then his comments last week kind of pissed me off as well. Oh, so really? I was like, yeah, give me him, give me him next. Oh, really? Yeah, but we'll, we'll get up and we'll make tracks up the ranks and fight him eventually. So you didn't like what he said when he said, I'll never let a white boy beat me? How did... well, like, I don't think, it, it's just, if if the shoe was on the other foot, like, how would it be? You know what I mean? If if a white person said it, um, they'd probably get a six-month ban. Like, imagine Billy Joe Saunders said that. Mm-hmm. He'd probably be banned for a year over it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, as I don't think, I don't think Devin Haney meant Meant any bad, real, but really bad boy. But he was just trying to trying to play up to Hopkins against Calzaghe. That that whole thing wasn't he? But um, yeah, I didn't like the comment that he made. Like, why you say it? Like, why bring? There's no point in bringing colour into it, really, is there? Like, definitely. Um, yeah. The thing is, as well, he's, when you, well, he's only like he's twenty one, so. Yeah, again, he's, he's, he's still young, but he, he is a very, very, very good fighter as well. He's a very yeah, good fighter. Yeah. You, know you have to give him credit, yeah, no, he is. But Teofimo Lopez was looking like the face Lomachenko. How do you see that one? I mean, again, two skillful fighters, two proper good champions of the division. How do you see that? I like that one more than Haney and Lomachenko. Yeah? Like, I rate Lopez probably more than I rate Haney. Um, his punch power as well would give... Lomachenko problems. I seen that quite close. Now I I did see Lomachenko getting through, it, but I did see that one quite close. Whereas Haney, I think Lomachenko is just movement will just kill him way too good. But look, boxing, it's boxing. Um, what do I know? Well, that's the last one. Actually, a question. And what do you know? How? What do you think of my boxing skills? I mean, you see me shadow box. You see me hit the pads. You're not bad, you know. You're not bad. <laughs> you- 
you kind of look like uh, you kind of remind me of Stephen Moore. You could take over the light heavyweight division, I reckon. Andy. By the way, you've definitely not been on the scale since lockdown, then, no? No, me. I don't. I, I, I've been. I've been. I've been running, cycling. And I ain't done nothing, mate. So I've just been running and cycling and walking. Make your pro debut after this. I'm too old, mate. I'm look at the grey in my beard. Too old. Yeah, twenty-five. Bed just for men. Yeah, that's all great. My mum's mascara. No, I just don't. <laughs> anyway, Gary, as always, man, I do appreciate you taking your time to come and talk to me. But you got anything you like to add, or anything you like to, to say to the people out there? No, I just hope this is all over soon and we can we can get back to doing what we love, you know. Definitely. Taking over the TV screens, hopefully in the next three or four months. I agree with you, Gary. Well, as always, pleasure to speak to you, my man. We'll do an Instagram live next week if you're up for it. Yeah, hundred percent, Andy. Yeah, I'll That'll give you the message and organise it. But again, enjoy your day, mate, and uh, we'll catch up with you very soon. Thanks for your time, Andy. Yeah. See you soon, Thanks, man. Gary.